Oh no. Oh no. Dog. <laughs> of course. Okay. Hey, I think that we are live. We are live. I see Mattia. <laughs> Lala. I can't say live in uh, Italian or Dutch. <laughs> Mattia. <laughs> you should work even with me you know, in Bacano. Mattia. <laughs> I love it. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to give everyone a couple of minutes to log in. Um, so thank you. We're loving all the hellos. We hope that you'll use the chat function on the side of the screen. Uh, we'll also be having polls during this webinar. So please keep a lookout for that. And you're going to hear my dog sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're going to give everyone just another minute, and then we'll kick off. I'm loving seeing all these faces. A lot of familiar faces and names also in the in the chat. Also you good. You can see faces? Where's the faces? I can't see no faces. I just see... Oh, sorry. I meant names. Oh, you meant names. Okay. I've seen your face. <laughs> <laughs> Not there's Love anything wrong with your faces. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so many people. I love that my whole house. I mean, I think we're all learning how this works. The whole house has been quiet. Now the dogs are barking. <laughs> I just heard my husband walking around. Can't can't stop. It's edition, by the way. Yeah. It's normal. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So our first poll is out. If everyone that's already signed in can take a moment, we want to see where you're from. We want to see how you're involved with the industry. Um, so please go over there and check out our first poll. I think we will give it just another minute. And we can get going. 62% mm, bartenders, 14, 15% enthusiasts. No media. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> they got deadlines. Deadlines. They got a couple of media. <laughs> Two media. Mm. Two media. What you, what you drinking? I'm Ian? drinking a beautiful tasting rum. What surprise, surprise! <laughs> a special, a special blend. That, uh, a special. Hey, in fact, uh, that actually, um, it was behind the bar when I guest bartended at your bar, <laughs> Flying Dutchman. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, we got a nice bottle. <laughs> That's it. I've got a bottle for you. <laughs> um, and Tess, people are asking, where's the Geneva glass? Do you have Geneva on you? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> look very closely. You can actually see the logo of my soon-to-open bar. It's very small. Ooh, nice. It's going to be in storage for a while now. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, guys, I think um, if y'all are ready, I think that we will go ahead and kick cool. off. Does that sound yep. good? Great. Um, well, everyone, thank you so much for taking time to join Full Hands In, Full Hands Out, our first episode that Tails is going to produce to bring together members of our Global Spirits community. Um, I know that I've been get, getting a ton of First of all, I'm Caroline Rosen. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, hello. Um, I'm the president of Tales of the Cocktail Foundation. And we are really, really excited for this to be the first of many different things that we are going to be able to bring to our global community. Um, I've been getting a ton of questions asking about Tales New Orleans. Um, we don't have an update now, but I can tell you that everything in our world looks different. But we are so excited that we're able to connect and what a glorious time that we live in, that we're able to get different people from across the globe together. And we will continue to, to create community and we will continue to make sure that we have education for each of you. And we are so honored to have three of the best and brightest from across the globe with us today. So 
<laughs> I would like to kick it off. Ian, would you mind introducing yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, my name's Ian, Ian Burrell. I'm the global ambassador for Rum, uh, based here in beautiful United Kingdom, well, London, United Kingdom. And that's me, in a nutshell, rum drinker. <laughs> Great. Okay, Tess, go for it. Uh, I'm Tess Postumus, uh, bartender and bar owner of Flying Dutchman Cocktails in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Um, also part of the education committee for uh, Tails. Uh, co-organizer, co-owner of Perfect Surf Bar Show of Amsterdam Cocktail Week. Writer, stuff, we keep busy. No audio? Yes, you do. There you go, Maria. Please introduce yourself. So, hi everyone. Uh, it's me, Mario. So, I'm the former bar manager of uh, Bacano since three years uh, ago. I used to, to work uh, quite all around the world and then I'm back to Rome and I run the operation there. Um, I'm happy about uh, my position there and uh, I love uh, what I'm doing. I'm bar manager, but I'm um, Always uh, at the same time uh, traveling all the world for a guest shift seminar. Uh, I'm a, mostly a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I love about having this group together today is we're you know, recording this and obviously streaming this is we have different perspectives. We have that of a, of a bartender, Mario, of a bar owner, you test, and as an ambassador, Ian. And I think the way for us to kick this off is we obviously have Amsterdam with Tess, London with um, Ian, and Italy with you, Mario. Would you, I think the question that we want to pose off the bat is, what is the status of the drinks industry in your country related to the coronavirus right now? And um, if you can just kind of give us an update of what it's like and how long you've been quarantined. Uh, so um, I'm almost at my 15 days here in a look at the tomb. The status in Italy is that everything is locked down, but the country at all is locked down. We are, we are, we are in a in a rush. We are. In, it's a not easy situation to, to run for every business, especially for the small business. They are really suffering this this uh, COVID nineteen. But at the moment, is the the only way to do is to to follow the rules, to stay locked down, to uh, to to make everything coming really in a proper way to to end up uh, as fast as possible. So it's um, it's definitely not easy, not easy. Someone is trying to do some uh, takeaway service, but even with the Italian law, it's not easy if you have uh, not a registered laboratory. So, uh, likely, the government start to uh, for, from the next week to help a little bit uh, everyone, uh, but just for surviving. Uh, the problem now is for people who have no savings on side uh, to even to to keep uh, the business uh, going. Even to I I'm scared that many many business will not reopen after the the situation. But right. I want to be positive. I want to be positive and I I hope really not. The bartending community in Italy is really close to each other. We help uh, and uh, I'm the first one ready to, to help everyone uh, as I can. Absolutely. You brought up is really interesting. I think that bar owners are going to have to look at the way that they open back up or they reopen. And I think that leads perfectly into tests can you tell us a little bit about um, not only your bar, but you have another bar scheduled to open or it was supposed to open last week. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the struggles that you've been facing? Um, yes, well, it's, um, yeah, so, okay. A uh, little update on the Netherlands, uh, Holland, Amsterdam. Um, we've been um, closed, like all hospitality industry has been closed by the government a little over a week ago before it was disencouraged to to gather in groups um a couple of days earlier i think three three days earlier before the entire closure of the hospitality industry all the clubs were already closed and uh, events of 100 people and more so we kind of saw it coming um it was yeah you, we saw the situation in italy uh, we knew it was about to happen 
So last week on Sunday, um, an announcement was made, was made that all hospitality industry needed to be closed down uh, per immediately. Um, so that's the situation now. They closed it down until the 6th of April, but Timo and I, uh, Timo is my business partner, um, we're counting on at least two, three months to be fair. Um, so that's, that's hospitality wise. Uh, schools also uh, closed. So all the kids are at home, people are working from home, but there's no complete lockdown yet. So we are eh, okay to go out on the streets. Um, some people even go to the, to, the, to the parks and do boot camps together. So people are clean of taking it serious and not having the meter and a half of distance. So if it continues like this, I think in the end of the week, we will have a, a complete lockdown. But I'm, I'm hoping it's, it, it won't come to that. Yeah. I think that you're right. And I think that's something that you really said uh, accord with me. And we were talking about this a little bit offline and that we all have government uh, regulations or uh, recommendations of how long that will be closed. But I think it's fair to say, and I would love your thought on this, Ian. I think, you know, you travel more than 90% of the people on this globe. I, I, your status is, I'm sure, top, top, top notch. But what are you seeing in London and do you think it's prudent for us all to plan on being grounded even longer than this, the regulations that we're getting? Well, what we're seeing in London is similar to uh, what Tess was saying in, in, in Holland, in Amsterdam, Netherlands, um, where uh, restaurants and bars are now, are now being closed. Um, there was a little bit of um, um, uh, apprehension on that because once you have to close your restaurant and that type of thing, you have to lay off staff. Um, and the government have fortunately intervened and have come in and basically have said we will pay, we will pay up to 80 percent of their wages to, if you are keeping your staff on. So that's been a major, major help for a lot of bar owners. I know personally, I mean, one one of my friends owns 12 bars, 12 bars here in London. And uh, he was actually out of his own pocket. Him and his business partner were paying his staff just a minimal amount just to keep them afloat and keep them going. But it wasn't enough to pay their rent. And as soon as the government stepped in and said, like, hey, we're going to pay up to 80 percent, it made a, a big difference. It also made a big difference because a lot of bars were still opening and they were still selling and they were still encouraging people to come to their bars. And if we are going to really beat this virus, we do need to adhere to this social distancing where we do have to um, stop the virus spreading in certain ways. And if we do have bars open and pubs open, yes, of course, people are going to be there and congregating and spreading the virus as such. So now there's a reason. Now, at least there's some form of conversation uh, once you're closed uh, to run the business, because we are all in this together. Um, I mean, I don't actually own a bar personally anymore. I sold my bar a few years ago. But um, ever since um, borders started closing, I've lost work. Um, events have been cancelled around the world. Um, so I haven't been able to go there and um, people can't plan ahead for certain events, even three, four, five months in advance. So it leaves me personally uncertain. But it means we all have to re reassess how we see the world, how we see ourselves um, and how we can actually make a really good contribution to this industry. Uh, this is a great start um, as such, because I know a lot of people are, are stuck home. Um, either self-isolating or uh, I've been quarantined. Um, I don't envy you, Mario. Um, 15 days at home is like, it's tough. It's tough. I, I do 15 minutes and I'm, I'm like so crazy. So, um, um, but yeah, so we're, we're all in this in, in different levels, but um, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm an I'm eternal optimist. I feel that we will come through this as such, but I just hope there's enough people out there that think that way and not do silly things like, congregate um, in the parks like they're doing in some places and uh, and thinking they're in they're invulnerable uh, just because they can't see the virus uh, they're in the, and that's that's going to be our biggest downfall so yeah. that's the situation where we are here in the UK at the moment that that's a great update and thank you and I think um, you know at the US has not taken steps to protect uh, bar and restaurant owners like y'all have and I know that Many, if not most of our friends had to lay off their entire staffs just to be able to get dis, uh, workers comp for them and um, different dis, uh, different facets from the government. So there's a different strategy there. But I think what you said is that's so important is we all have to hold ourselves accountable and we all have to do our part. This truly is we are a community of gatherers. But I think that by finding other ways to gather and other ways to spread that word, it's super important as we look at flattening the curve and stopping the chain. Um, 
you know, what advice, Mario, you've been in this for the longest. You have really created a whole group and I know that so many Italian bartenders have really rallied around you. What are some of the things, like what can we take away or what are some of those pieces that you've been doing? We know that mental health is gonna be more important now than ever. Um, but what, what are you doing to keep the morale up or what are some best practices that we can learn from you and having been in this for 15 days? Uh, as I told you before in, uh, in the previous conversation, I'm locked down from uh, 15 days ago. Um, it's not terrible. So it's uh, at the first days, I think I, I can go, go, go crazy, but not at all. I'm just living day by day. I am I'm using my time to, to understand what I really love because usually we, we are so focused on our job that we confuse our the things we love to do with our job because we love our job but are two different things that you sometimes you need time to understand what are your real passion outside from your job and i'm using it for uh for reading for uh even to to talk with the people so uh, i'm i'm using this time that i i need to be stopped at all to communicate because first of all before to be a bartender we all are communicators so our main job is to communicate with other people to be connected with them this is the, the reason people go to the bar um, so uh, yeah every time even to answer back to everyone is uh, texting you on Instagram on Facebook it's time to uh, really to bond a new relationship, uh, new to to go deeper in some friendship, uh, and this is a, a really important part of our job. And finally, and in the same time, unfortunately, we have time to do that. So this is for uh, the part I'm using for this quarantine. I love it. What did you say the last time you had this much time and you were at home? You were three months old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last time I slept so so good and so much, I was three months old. I was three <laughs> months old. You know, uh, at the moment I'm sleeping, uh, you know, like uh, like animals. Two hours sleep for awake. Two sleep for awake. <laughs> you know. Oh, I, 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 I lose control. I lose the control. But it, it's okay, you know when. Yeah, I am. My apartment is not huge. I have not so much space to to be. And I pass by from uh, the the sofa to the bed, from the bed to the sofa, passing by to the kitchen. So I am getting even belly. I love it. I love it. What are you doing? Like, what are some of your initial takeaways? Again, how often can you just if people don't know you, how often are you usually on the road? If this was a normal year. Takeaways. I'm sorry. Takeaways, and how long are you usually? Abroad? Sure. Oh, how long my so usually? I would, I would ask. What are some of the takeaways? Oh, how, right, okay. how, well, I just want people to know how much you travel. All right. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some um, people are I, saying, it, you know, gosh, I'm getting so pissed off. I'm like, it seems it seems like a long time, uh, a lot of times, because um, I go to so many places. But sometimes it's only like uh, three or four days in a week. It just so happens to be four weeks continuously so it might be uh three or four different places but the last trip i did just before um the lockdown um i was in jamaica for the rum festival um for four days and then flew straight from jamaica via london um transit in hong kong to melbourne um I did two days masterclass in melbourne and then from melbourne i went down to christchurch in new zealand for two days of a whiskey festival just to introduce those whiskey guys into rum um, and then came back on Monday morning to Sydney to do a couple of master classes and do an interview of a magazine. Uh, and then from there, jumped on a plane two days later back to London, which was via Singapore, which was a 24 hour flight. So, um, yeah, so uh, and that was literally two weeks ago. <laughs> I think I got back two weeks ago and that was the last time I traveled um, uh, since the lockdown. Um, Last week, I should have been in Sweden doing a rum fest out there, educating those crazy Swedish people because they love their rums um, on, a, on a cruise out there. And, um, and tomorrow, I should have been flying to Argentina because on Thursday, I was sailing down to Antarctica. 
um, because I was going to do some classes down there because you can't be a global ambassador if you don't do all seven continents. But Antarctica is cancelled. In fact, fortunately, I just got an email from them today saying that they were they will forward my my trip to next year. So hopefully I'll be going in January in 2021 to Antarctica. So, uh, um, yeah, so there'll be rum in all seven continents. Don't worry, wrong guys. There'll be rum in seven continents. But yes, a lot of traveling. <laughs> but all of that is now put aside <laughs> um, as such. But um, I suppose that's a good thing in a way that there's less planes in the sky because there's less pollution, which is a good thing, I suppose. <laughs> That's true. And so how are you, how are you really, is there anything that you're doing right now that's the best practice in your mind? You're used to being on the road, you're used to being on the go. Yeah. How are you keeping up? What are you doing right now? Well, what I'm doing right now is one of the things is actually finally actually uh, putting pen to paper, uh, so to speak, and actually writing my book, um, which I've been trying to do for the last few years. <laughs> oh my God. There's a few people out there saying, yeah, finally, Ian. So um, yeah, so I've been I've been doing that. Um, also, I've been working with a few um, a few people that want to do more masterclasses online. So similar to this, where we get the community together, we share information, we share um, knowledge about the rum industry. So I'm looking at speaking with a few of my friends that make rum. People like uh, Richard Seal, Joyce Spence, um, Trudy M. Branca, uh, Maggie Campbell. Um, I want to get these guys with myself having a chewing the fat, as they say, uh, talking fun, talking rum, um, and spreading our love to uh, fellow fellow industry people. So I'm keen to get that up and going. So I've been speaking to a, a very uh, big drinks uh, company that wants to actually help put that on. So um, yeah, so now instead of actually me traveling around the world, giving the masterclasses, we're going to try to send the masterclasses through the internet, uh, into your laptop, onto your phone, into your room, um, and you don't have to dress up. You can be in your night clothes. I mean, I, the more <laughs> I have in my life, the better. So I, I applaud this. And I would just like to, before we move on and test, I want to ask specifically what you're doing to keep the morale up of your teams as a bar owner. If you have any questions, we're about to move to a Q&A section. So there is a tab on the top right. And if anybody that's watching has any questions, I would love for you to put them in there so we can answer them. Um, Tess. How many people do you have that work for you? What are some of the best practices that you're doing since you are all quarantined by keeping morale up and staying in touch? Um, oof. Um, so we have six people at Flying Dutchman, and I, and then six more at Dutch Courage. So Dutch Courage is bar number two. We were uh, supposed to open uh, in two weeks. <laughs> Yeah, so from April 1st, I do have a bar and the key, but we can't really open. Um, I do have these very nice glasses, though, so using them now at home. Um, no, so we have we have 12 people. Uh, six of them uh, haven't started yet, so we haven't have a, a contract uh, signed yet. So they are still with their old previous job or uh, in between. The other six, um, we continue their salary on their full-time hours. Um, the government uh, helps out a lot, so everybody who is shut down is compensated. Um, so 90% of salaries are um, uh, are reimbursed by the government. So we only pay 10% per person, so that's very good. Excluding, obviously, Timo and I, uh, rent, all those things. So we do have continuous um, yeah, money getting out of the, job, uh, out of the, the bar instead of coming in. Um, but we have some savings, so that's, that's okay for now. Um, so that's the two bars. We try to keep morale high by trying to find uh, alternatives. Um, and we are not on lockdown yet, so uh, we do deliveries. So since last Friday, we do Uber Eats and Deliveroo. Um, so in Amsterdam, you can order and we make cocktails a la minute, fresh, uh, vacuum seal them, uh, use big blocks of ice. And it's I'll, I'll post a picture uh, later on. Yeah. Um, and then a little guy on a, on, a, on, a, on a bike or on a scooter uh, comes and brings it to your house. So we do cocktail deliveries. So uh, my team every night, two of them uh, makes, makes cocktails a la minute and, uh, and, and seals them and, and, and packs them up. Um, another thing we're doing is uh, online um, workshops. So we just had our first one on Thursday. Um, obviously, everybody uh, is working from home, a lot of the big businesses. Uh, who do Friday drinks or Thursday drinks. And uh, to do a bit of positive team building, we organize online workshops. So we send them kind of like a grocery list three days in advance of uh, if you want to interact and join in the workshop, these are the ingredients you, you can buy. And we'll explain during the workshop what to do with them. 
Um, we'll have a bar behind the bar. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, behind the bar with just a laptop and a webcam, just like we have now. So they can see everybody at home from the office. Um, they'll, they'll prepare the cocktails, explain everything. Uh, and then they can they can interact and afterwards they have a, a nice uh, gathering, a happy hour together. So we're trying to to set that up a bit more and get some push for it. Um, we're thinking about maybe doing a cocktail um, subscriptions. So then every Thursday, Friday, you'll get three cocktails again vacuum sealed in little pouches in the in the mail. Um, so that way we can get a bit more of traction because the cocktail deliveries. Right. It's fun, it's nice, but it only covers 2.9 kilometers from where the bar is because that's where they deliver. Uh, now we can cover a bit more and also making it a subscription so we can have a bit more of an actual cash flow coming in. Um, today I made 10 vlog, vlog videos for uh, a big newspaper. Cool. So <laughs> Um, so I'm trying to 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 uh, educate a bit. We have some time for it now. We have an empty bar with all the tools necessary. So uh, we're still thinking about game plans, but these are things where we're doing now and trying to keep the, the staff busy with. Um, oh yeah, also we have uh, we have a back bar of 800 bottles. So uh, all, all our staff is now researching all the bottles and we're making a big database with pictures and everything. So afterwards, when this is all over and it's done, we're gonna share it with the world. And we have this huge database of info on all the bottles we have. <laughs> so we're trying to keep busy and, and morale high. That's, that's great. I think keeping people and trying to create new tasks is really interesting. And I'll just say with our team, um, with Tails, we, spend all year um, not only getting ready to produce our July event, but education, our cocktail apprentice program, spirited awards. And what's been so lovely is we had a meeting last week and I looked to the whole team and I said, everything is changing. And that's okay, because what we're going to be able to do is we're now going to be able to take this when people used to just sit in seminar rooms from 20 to 150 people, our whole team gets to work on these new projects together. And I think that's really key for keeping morale up um, and people excited. So now we have a few questions coming in. Um, so please go to the questions tab if you have some. And first, I just wanna knock this out. Ian, you've already got people excited about this masterclass learning platform. Um, when are you planning to launch it? <laughs> I think you just made your, your official <laughs> debut here. <laughs> Correct. That means I have to do it. Uh, yeah, we're actually in the process of uh, well, getting getting the platform sorted out now, trying to find the best one, whether it be something like um, a Facebook or a Zoom or Instagram Live. Um, actually, the the ideas came about over over the lot over this weekend, so it's imminent. But as soon as as soon as we know exactly the date, which will be quite soon, we'll let everyone know. The whole industry will know, especially all the realm lovers. But uh, it's going to be very very soon, very soon. Tales with so please keep us up to date. You'll be the second um, to know. <laughs> Mario, this is a question. Um, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, Mario, do you have any contingency plans on your radar right now? I mean, are you looking at, at I know that we talked about, it, it looks like it could be September until you're back behind the bar. Do, do you have a plan B if, if, that, if it's later than that, or? Hi, good, uh, good question. Uh, at the moment, uh, I have not a proper plan B because uh, if all the country will be, uh, it's, will be locked down until September, but I think no, I think no. Because if you close totally uh, uh, a country uh, for so long time, uh, the economy, you will never rise up. So I think that for the first days of May, everything will end up and start to come step by step to be more uh, near to the normal life. No plan B at the moment because uh, for sure if I have to be locked down, I cannot even to move from my country. But I, 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 I went back to, to Italy three years ago after a long time because I decided to, to do something nice in, in my country in my country because it's uh, it's it's my house it's my home you know so my idea is to stay strong be here and um, to have myself uh, helping the other people so many things 
like uh, different crowdfunding uh, to help the small business. Uh, the one thing that the community learn from this crisis is that um, no, no one is alone. Everyone could ask help uh, and there is no shame to do that. So um, everyone, all the community in, in Italy, all the bar community, it's uh, taking away a small part of the uh, the savings to to put on the side on uh, on the side in a uh, in uh, to help uh, other other business, other small uh, small bar. So um, probably we will uh, reborn after this crisis totally, and I think in a good way. I think in a good way. I want to see only the the good part of this crisis. We will uh, un reborn totally as humans uh, before as professional as professionalists. So um, I want to see the only the, the positive vibes, uh, the positive things about that that are um, happening here in this time of uh, of our life uh, to have a second chance to make things uh, works better. I think that's very beautifully said, and I think that as we look at how it changes and coming at it from a different perspective. Um, Ian, I, I would love your thoughts and then Tess, yours. You know, this virus has obviously had a large impact um, on all the operations of a bar and of, of spirits and everything else. Do you have any idea with the long-term changes? Like, what do you think that there's going to be? What's our new normal, right? Is there anything off the top of your head that you're like going forward I think that we will implement X. And, and I can tell you after Katrina, um, <clears throat> Katrina was the first time that we started texting, you know, and it was really important to me to have all the family members in my life and all the people on my team know how to text because all of the cell phone towers went down. So we couldn't use, all of our email servers were down. This was like before Google. And um, so it was really important for me to have, make sure, and that seems crazy now, but that everyone on our team could text. Is there anything that y'all can think of? And I know that we're really early on in this that you'll implement moving forward. Um, from, from, from a, as I said, I don't own a, a bar or a restaurant um, anymore, um, but from a, from an ambassador perspective, I suppose it's not really it's 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 realizing what you have and not taking things for granted. Um, I, I take a lot of things took a lot of things for granted that the fact that I was always going to be constantly working. Um, I had another event around the corner so I could pick and choose which um, who I worked with and how I worked. Um, now we all have to work in a different way. And it's about applying ourselves in those different ways and seeing if we can do that in the future. Once the doors open, once we beat this virus, and I'm confident we are going to beat this virus, um, we are. It is going to be a new world. But what are we going to learn from the things that we've that we're going through now? Are we going to apply that to our future? Are we going to be more? Are we going to help each other a little bit more? Um, because this this the whole virus thing. What we're doing, what we're seeing, is the best of people. We're also seeing the worst of people. There's some certain, there's things I'm seeing that I'm just shocked about and just uh, people I just thought were just like ordinary people and I've seen how bad and how evil and how malicious they can be um, in times of need but I'm also seeing people that are, are pushing themselves out extending themselves to help out as much as they can and giving things and giving things as well because I've always believed you give you receive so the fact that people are giving information out there and offering their time for free and offering um, rum companies, offering alcohol so you can actually use it to, to create sanitizer and things like that. And it's just, it's just something that is just, that it, it, it might only be a small gesture in the grand scheme of things, but it's an important thing for the people that actually are benefiting from that. So if we can actually learn from where we are now and take that to the future and apply that to be positive in the future and, apply, and make, make ourselves a better person, I think that that's always going to be a win for for us. So I'm actually going to be looking at the world in a different way um, now after all this because uh, I've never been for a situation like this. I don't think hardly anyone has, and uh, the older generation that are out there have been through world wars, and this technically is a a world war as such. They've been through certain things, and and they're the ones that are suffering at the moment um, as such in, in the majority. So. Yeah, it's 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 we have to look at we can't we can't just fall back into that trap of oh right we beat it we can just carry on the same way because when we haven't learned from our mistakes. Totally agree. The new normal is now, right? And I think that it's going to continue to change. Tess, is there anything, or Mario, you as well? After that, that you're looking to to 
to be your new normal or some of those best practices that you plan to in incorporate going forward? Um, I think it's difficult to say for the bar and the bar industry at the moment uh, because it's still quite fresh. So I think the ideas are still coming and evolving. And I think uh, efficiency wise, um, those are things I think that might change for the bar business. Um, but I think for the Netherlands, it's more on a, on a broader aspect. So um, people like nurses and uh, well, hospital staff, um, uh, people in schools, they were very underpaid. It has been a topic for the last five or more years. Every time there were str like strikes and everything and, and it never changed. So I'm, I'm hoping that after this, they will finally get their pay raise. Um, so I think it's more on a broader topic than just the bar industry. Uh, what Ian says with the rum distilleries, uh, we see here happening as well. So a lot of big Geneva producers are now um, starting to produce hand sanitizers and alcohol for the hospitals. Uh, so it's a lot of collaboration, a lot of helping each other. Um, so I, th I think we still need to see where it leads the bar business per se. Um, I think just overall we we will not take things for granted anymore. So just the fact that you can gather uh, our team together for a group training to do a, a tasting together, um, those little things that cost so little effort um, are now very difficult. So uh, if you want to do a team training, it's going to be in a setting like this with all little little cubes with videos. And uh, yeah, it, it's everything's more difficult. And the... the um, yeah, the, the getting together aspect of it all, which is what I love of this industry and the people business. Um, yeah, that's exactly the thing we're missing now. So I think those are things we will not take for granted anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mario, what do you think? You really helped um, champion so many. When, when the lockdown was happening, you were, what were you creating? You were creating t-shirts and websites. Like, did that really help liven the spirits and get everyone together? As we all know, Italian bartenders are some of the best bartenders in the world. And it is such a community. Um, Y'all are kind of leading the pack right now. What, what do you think will be the new normal for you? And I'm, I'm dubbing you to speak on behalf of all Italian bartenders. No the pressure. new normal, the new normal. So first of all, we need to to start to feel used to the such a social distance. So this is a huge impact uh, that we will uh, pay later on to 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 stay uh, a little bit not so close uh, together. But in the same time, uh, we will learn to be probably more focused on the human connection. Uh, that, so um, we need to, uh, we will spend more time with our guests. Because by the way, we will have not so many guests as before, due to the social distance even inside the bar. So we will, uh, we will be so angry uh, about having a guest, a customer, uh, people uh, coming to us that we will really enjoy the, uh, their presence. And this is something that in the last time uh, before uh, things that COVID happened, um, someone missed someone miss the, the meaning of our job. Uh, other thing, we need to, to spend more time uh, even to, to learn using this time uh, that we are obliged to be stopped to to learn uh, more about uh, ourselves and knowing more about ourselves uh, will help us even to to understand more the other people so we create a really probably bigger community than before because now we have time to to know much better each other um that's it is this then we only have to to hope that everything will end uh, really soon and to restart uh, as much as possible. Um, I think that for the early summer, uh, everything will, will start to, to run uh, quite properly, quite properly. Right. Before. Now, I think you're right. <laughs> actually something really important when you talk about spending extra time with your guests. I don't think on whatever that special day is, the lights turn on and it's just the same, right? We're gonna have to, and I, 
I think that that's a conversation that I'd love to continue at a later date with y'all. And whether that's a week or two weeks or two months from now is there's going to be a lot of stigmatism about people going back out. There's going to be a lot of fear that I think we as an industry are going to have to collaborate together. So people feel comfortable coming back into our bars and saying hello. And, you know, I, I love to give a hug. And that's been the toughest part for me is, you know, like it, are we going to be able to give hugs again? And I mean, or two kisses on the cheek. I mean, these are real things that um, I think our entire globe is going to have to get reacquainted with and make sure that that's okay. What do you got, Ian? Tell me. <laughs> no, it's just echoing what school tests. It's free in uh, Amsterdam and uh, in a place like Belgium. <laughs> Three kisses. You're right. All of them. All of them. That's it. <laughs> these are things that we're going to have to really, um, we're going to have to think about. And I think that that's where our power as such a hospitality, hospitality driven community is going to come in is we're going to be on the front lines to really um, share what those new best practices are and, and how we communicate with each of our patrons. Um, guys, we only have a couple more minutes left. Um, Tess, real quick are asking, you know, why did you decide to open Dutch Courage? And, you know, are you excited that you're doing, I mean, obviously you're proceeding with it, but give us a little bit about that. And then I would like a, a, a quote and everyone else that asked a question, we're going to follow up. I know that there are some um, real important questions that I, I'm glad are being asked, but Tess, let's, let's kick off with this and then we'll start wrapping up. Yeah, we'll try to keep the positive. No, so it's, um, we're still continuing. So the April 1st, we get the key, we start renovation, uh, as long as we don't get locked down. But um, we're planning on still doing the renovation at April 1st. So it's gonna be two, three weeks, no rush, eh, because we can't open anyways. So um, we already hired our six uh, bartenders. So we're gonna start training uh, from April 1st onwards by video call, um, by just doing home studies with documents we're sending and we're making at the moment. Um, and yeah, wh why open the second bar? Um, because we love to. And it's, um, it's a concept we, we already had before we opened Flying Dutchman. So oh, wow. and I, my business partner, we, uh, we always dreamt of having our own bar together. And this was actually the dream we had, Dutch Courage. So it's um, a focus on, on, on Dutch uh, spirits, mainly Geneva, but also the old, old Dutch liqueurs and advocaat and everything we have. Um, because it, 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 it shows the history of the Netherlands with the booze industry, which is very, very uh, long and rich, and it's very cool. Um, but we needed the proper property, and now we found it. So the moment I, I, I stumbled upon the property, I was like, yes, we need to need to do this. So it's, uh, it's bad timing, it's horrible timing, <laughs> but we're, we're going to continue. <laughs> And uh, if you want to follow us, uh, we'll post everything on Instagram. It's uh, Dutch Courage Cocktails, also on Facebook. Uh, and we're going to show you little bits and pieces we're working on. And it's it's going to take longer than, than we wished for, but it's uh, it's also going to be a lesson for bartenders dreaming of opening a bar, I think. And there's always something you didn't plan, and you always need to have a backup plan, one, two, till a gazillion and then even then you still need to be able to improvise and that's exactly what we're doing right now so it's um it's going to be interesting but it's also going to be a lot of fun i hope amazing i love it well guys i, I want to wrap up i would love to get um mario and ian test just a couple of final thoughts and again for all the questions on the side i know that there are a couple specific to mario we're going to pass those along to some of these amazing folks as you give your final note or message to the wonderful people that are watching now and that will watch in the future if each of you wouldn't mind sharing the best way to get in touch with you um, we would love for them to stay connected with you as well so mario do you want to kick us off so um my point is to live the day by day don't push toward yourself doing something you don't want Feel free even to, to be lazy in these days. Don't feel obliged to show nothing to no one because you have not. Be positive, have fun, try to entertain yourself as much as possible and think that everything will be better than before. That's my idea. I'm sure about, I trust. I love that, Ian. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, you can hear me now. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, it's it's about just being positive. Um, we we are going for um, uh, yeah, uncharted waters, but we will come through. Uh, we, I definitely believe we'll come through uh, through this. Um, I mean, we have to adhere to the rules. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that think they know and they think they're in in invulnerable, but we're not. This this virus can take us all out. So let's just adhere to the rules. If we're doing social distancing, social distance. That doesn't mean hanging out with a mate because you know them and that type of stuff to keep that two meters away from them. If you're quarantined, Mario's proved it for 15 days. He's done it. He's living testament. You can do that as well. If it's locked down, don't try and fight against the police. How, I mean, how else can, I mean, if someone said to me, you can save the world by sitting down watching Netflix. Hey, that's, <laughs> what else, what else could you ask for? Sitting down Netflix and drinking rum. That is sitting Netflix and what drinking rum, we can all help save the planet. And once we get through, it's about continue working in together because the reason why I love this industry so much is because we are a big family. We're our community. We all work together. We're working together now on this whole thing with this platform here, with Tales, with all the organizations out there doing stuff. There's people online now, the people that I love, that Tara um, uh, out in Puerto Rico doing her thing. Timo, of course, your partner out there doing his thing. Um, Tiki Mama over there in Berlin doing her thing. So there's lots of people out there working to try to make this industry better. And that's the great thing about this industry. So I'm very positive for the whole thing. I know I've talked too much because I've been drinking a lot of rum. Um, but hey, we're all in this together. <laughs> I love it. And Tess? Well, the guys already said it kind of. Um, just don't be a dick. Eh? I can swear a little bit on Dutch. Um, but listen to the governments, listen to the regulations, keep your distance. Um, and if you're at home uh, and if you're doing research or if your team together is doing research like we're doing at Flying Dutchman, um, just share, share whatever you're up to, share ideas, share um, documents. Uh, let's, let's use this time, uh, binge watch uh, Netflix, but also to, uh, if you're educating a little bit, uh, share what you're finding and um, yeah, let's grow together as a, as a whole. And Tess, I would love to, with some of that, if you'd like to share anything with Tails, we are happy to push it out. So as we'd like to document this process as you open up a bar during these crazy times. And um, absolutely. Well, guys, we've gone two minutes over. I just want to thank everyone that's out there watching. We are going to make sure that this is shared so people that couldn't watch during this time can have access to all of your wonderful, uh, wonderful chat today. Um, on behalf of Tales of the Cocktail, uh, thank you so much. We look forward to being a voice and helping gather community from across the globe. Um, if you would like to submit any other questions or any other suggestions for people to be on our future seminars, please email info at talesofthecocktail.org. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for your time. Tess, Ian, Mario, thank you for kicking this off with us. Much love to all. Be safe, y'all. And we will see you next week. Bye, y'all.